So hi, everyone. Um, so recently, I spoke to a House rep about her thoughts on the really evident current social and political status of polarization. Because, you know, obviously, as a legislator, you want a bipartisan effort to get you know, more bills passed. So I asked about her thoughts on that. And she told me she thought it was something natural, that it was a pattern that you, know, you could see depending on uh, the election cycle and who was in power, um, and that it kind of ebbed and flowed. Now, this might come as a surprise to you, but believe it or not, a politician was wrong. So um, actually, <laughs> according to Pew Research, uh, the average partisan gap has gone from 15 to 36 percentage points since 1994. Um, that, it's over doubled. So, you know, that number might not mean a lot to you right now. But you have to acknowledge that while a divide in opinion is not a weird concept, you know, there's usually two sides to an argument. Um, what is concerning is the fact that um, as an American public, during just the Ob Obama administration, we had reached record highs for how polarized we were. And just in the past year or two, we've surpassed those levels significantly. So, um, you know, there can be a lot of cases made for why we've become so polarized and divided. Um, but today I'm gonna tell you about a few reasons I've seen as prominent um, that contribute to this and why the culture surrounding it is so detrimental um, and toxic to our ability to progress as a society. So in the past year, in the past, um, you know, administration, it's become evident how divided people are of you know, different political affiliation. It's undeniable. Um, and especially with the rise of technology and social media and communication, people are able to hide behind a mask and uh, express their opinion rather aggressively, to say the least. Uh, you know, things like, uh, you shouldn't be alive because you have this opinion is not uncommon to see online and even here in conversations nowadays. So yeah, you know, typically a political conversation would follow the ideal format that you know one side gives their opinion and their logic behind it, uh, same with the other side, and then they kind of battle it out. They poke holes in each other's argument and eventually either come to a consensus that one side is more feasible or you know, figure out a middle ground resolution that addresses some of both of their needs and concerns. But like I said, the argument now has become super ad hominem. It's like more, I'm going to attack your side because I don't think I like what you're going to have to say. Um, I don't care if I don't get my point across. I just don't want you to be able to say anything. And that kind of attitude has turned so many people off from talking politics even more than usual, which is saying a lot. Um, so you know, a lot of you may laugh because you've encountered something like that or seen something like that, um, unfortunately. And so have a lot of other people. You know, it's not you know everyone's probably gone through that at some point. And what happens is so many people shy away from having any political conversation at all because you know they want to avoid that conflict. That there becomes this large gap. There's a lack of communication and conversation other than those few people I you know previously talked about that kind of fruitlessly yell at each other, you know. So other than that, there's no talk happening. And what happens is you run the risk of having a lot of ignorance and apathy because no one's talking. So then, you know, we ignore the issues that we face and in the end, it's just, a, you know, a lack of necessary conversation. So, you know, I don't personally believe that people are inherently evil because they have a certain political view. I my kind of thinking is that people have different priorities and values in life and you know that we come to opinions because you know different opinions because of that and so you know of course there's going to be disagreement but running away from conflict is so problematic because we just create this gap you know the, the logic is that i'm going to run away from this conversation because i want to avoid conflict but then the gap that's created just feeds more into that and the conflict becomes greater and greater so it's really it's really counterproductive if you think of it um, another kind of to go deeper another subset of this is the concept of controversy so you know, people, again, they try to avoid conflict. They don't talk. Another reason a lot of people give is, you know, they go, I don't want to be touchy. I don't want to be controversial. But if you think about it, a lot of the issues we've collectively deemed as controversial could, regardless of the views you hold, they could have really adverse potential outcomes if they're not addressed, regardless. Um, so what happens is we, again, run away and these issues still exist. You know, um, if, if you think about it, again, a lot of people are in the same boat. You know, they, they disagree, but they also fear sharing their opinion. 
So if we acknowledge that, it shouldn't be as hard to begin to have those conversations. I've seen people of all demographics, of all ages, talk about issues they're passionate about, and more often than not, they're actually able to come to some sort of consensus. It's not something weird and unattainable. It, it's definitely possible, and we're all probably fully capable of that. So what happens is, again, when you create this gap with this lack of conversation, what happens is you allow for this uh, ignorance is bliss kind of mentality to get really large. And in the end, the issue you're avoiding was still never solved. You know, just because we uh, turn a blind eye doesn't mean it goes away. Politics, you know, if they don't directly affect you, um, if it's an issue that doesn't directly affect you, it can still affect your community. Point being, no one's, no one's untouchable by politics. So, you know, these issues are still never solved. We just ignore them. And in the background, they just grow larger and larger. And there, you know, nothing ever happens because we refrain from having this conversation. So, you know, after this talk, I'm not going to pretend you can all go out and talk to anyone about everything and have no problems. I get that that's not how it works. I get that it's a multifaceted issue that's, you know, arguably rooted into our culture. I, I get that. But I will also acknowledge that we can all see it as a problem and that we, it's, you know, it's not something super profound. The, the basic thing is we all have opinions, uh, political opinions, and we don't talk about them because we fear negative repercussion. But by recognizing that a lot of people are in the same boat as us, we can slowly ease into being able to have conversations, whether they be about controversial matters or not. So as, as people who will be affected by this every day, what, what I encourage you to do is to normalize these conversations as constituents, as educators, as you know, citizens, civilians, we have to normalize these conversations. We shouldn't, you know, don't let politics be something that people fear uh, once a year at a holiday dinner with their in-laws. Let it be something normal. You know, we need to talk about it. We need to teach our youth to talk about it because um, it's, it's not something that should be, you know, we shouldn't feed into the stigma that it's just something we can't talk about because it's always there. We can't escape it. We're just scared of it because it, 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 it is something big. There are a lot of big issues, and I get that, and we're scared of them. But, you know, again, there's always that kind of idea we teach kids, like you shouldn't run away from your fears, you know. So it's, it's kind of like that. So I encourage you to, again, normalize these conversations and don't let politics just be this dirty word. Go out and don't fear conflict and disagreement. Embrace it. Thank you.